Hey guys, this is Eugene from Review Outdoor Gear and I have a Grand Force Brooks uh, Outdoor Axe to review for you today. And um, you can see it's tiny. I'll go through all the little details. I'll, like always, I'll show you the measurements um, and what everything's like. Talk about the sheath. I'll do a little chopping test, do a little splitting test. Um, and also talk about how it feels and the functionality and the usage of this axe. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the company, guys. Um, you know, Grand Force Brooks, in a, as in my previous videos I've mentioned, this is just a wonderful company and they make really quality tools, okay? So let me just talk a little bit about the construction of this axe. And before I even get into that, I just want to say that with every axe you buy, these guys provide you with a little axe book. And I've gone through this book before. It's the same for all of their... Um, axes so you can click a link right now on the side here and you can go to a little video of of me going through this book and they'll show you what's in there it's a really cool little book it just it gives you a lot of really good information and it shows that it's a quality axe that they have kind of a manual to go with it um, you know especially if you're just getting into this so the outdoor axe yeah this is quite a spendy axe guys but it's uh it's got a certain purpose and um, you know the construction it is just it is just nice. Um, so I'm just going to go through from the handle up through the blade here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the handle. So it's a hickory handle. It's soaked in linseed, boiled linseed oil, and you know they let it soak in there and saturate really well. And it just it's really nice and that protects the wood for a long time. Uh, the grain, you know, not not the best orientation, but I'll say that, you know for this size of an axe or hatchet you don't really need uh you know exact nice vertical orientation i mean if you have it that's a bonus but this is still really really good and, and i'm not concerned about this you know popping anytime you can't put too much force into that just because of the short handle um, so that's nice uh, the handle is kind of a straighter cut handle it has a kind of a straight back and curved right through here it has a swell going both ways that's very nice it has a really nice little lanyard hole there very nicely finished here on all the edges. Um, just very nice workmanship, guys. These guys, Grand Force Brooks, they really put their time into making these axes finished off just right. Um, so going up the handle here, we have a really nice uh, little stamp from Grand Force Brooks, and uh, that has their logo there and everything. So it's made in Sweden. Then as we go here, uh, we've got our uh, kind of a, a stainless steel wrap here on the handle so this is for when you're chopping this will prevent the the wood from from fraying and from breaking it you know when you're chopping through the wood and it hits it here that just gives more strength and protection to the handle then this uh actual axe head so it's it's hand forged okay it's made out of really nice steel they don't disclose the exact steel they use because it's kind of a company thing um, but it's a very nice quality steel and these axes come razor sharp out of out of the box. I've already been chopping some wood with this and it's uh, it's still pretty sharp and I've been failing recently with I think I've shaved most of my hairs off my arm now um, but even when I do get some hairs my hairs are really thin but it does shave hairs so if, and it's hard to see because I, I got really blonde hair but I mean it's that sharp so I'm not even gonna do the paper test because these things come just razor sharp out of the box and that's really nice um, you just have to maintain the, sh the blade they're very nicely heat treated and there are videos out there on YouTube of how these guys forge these axes. So this is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, now, if you're looking at the, the little blade here, I'm, I'm actually going to do some measurements and get some weights. But, um, oh, you know, actually, before I go there, I'm going to say, so the fit of the, of the, fit of the uh, um, axe blade to the handle or axe head to the handle is just, just pristine. Um, they have a really nice mushrooming here of the wood it goes out beyond it goes out beyond the metal so that's going to hold really well there is a tiny little gap there which is not you know super ideal um but it's very very nicely uh tightly sat on there or are placed or hung some people i think the right way to say it is you, you hang an axe head on, on a handle so um it's very nicely hung on there because it's got the mushrooming that's going to make sure that the wood doesn't go slip that way out of the axe head when you chop. It doesn't have a metal wedge because this thing is just so small. I think they've decided to not even put a metal wedge in there, but it has a really nice wedge placed into there. 
and the workmanship uh, you know with these smaller axe heads it's harder to make a smaller axe head just because it's it, it's more you have to be more precise and it's very very smooth and very nicely done that adds to the price here we have a stamp for Grand First Brooks we also have the initials of the guy who made it and if you want to know who it is you look in this book and it'll tell you the name of the man or yeah it's, it's a guy who made who actually forged this head so again Sweden made very nice quality very very sharp and we'll do some chopping now let's measure this thing just to kind of give you some dimensions as well so if we're we're gonna go from uh, the back of the handle here to the end and that's uh, 14 and to the top of the of the uh, axe head that's 14 in uh, a quarter and then there's about a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch of the of wood sticking out, out beyond that um, and then you know this little bit here is about inch and a half on this side and about an inch and a quarter here the axe head itself so the length of the axe head is four inches and three quarters almost just a bit under three quarters four and three quarters the cutting edge is two and uh, looks like seven sixteenths plus um, it's a very nice shape uh, it's kind of a unique shape to the handle or to the axe head and also you know this this axe is designed as far as I understand to be taken out in your pack it's it's designed to be super light so let's get the weight on this thing so it's you know it's an outdoor axe so it's you're supposed to put it in your pack and take it out with you if you're going on a nice little hike or whatever so look at that it's one pound and 2.3 ounces that's really light and then if we put uh, the sheath on here that comes with it that adds another well one pound 3.8 ounces I'm gonna talk about some other sheaths that we've got here and that's one pound 3.4 ounces with that sheath so um, those are the measurements and uh, details of the size and, and such of the axe um, you know what's really cool too here is um, back here they have a little piece that's kind of uh, ground down right on the edge and that might be really hard to see but that that type of attention to detail just amazing to me that little thing there um, I don't know if you can see it you, you, um, so you guys can see there's a little bit of a ground down corner there and that basically I'm not sure why they have it there honestly but they have it on all, on a lot of their other ones and uh, I think that's maybe designed to not poke through the leather I'm not sure it, it to me it's seems like it's made on the wrong side um, but that's when we're talking about the sheath um, I'm not sure the thinking behind it because they have it on multiple axes like that the Grand Force Brooks guys so in terms of the sheath um, you know I'll say it's a decently designed sheath uh, in some ways there's a couple things I don't like about it and hence uh, we've kind of been on a roll with just making awesome sheaths for uh, axes in my opinion but uh, so when you put this thing on here um, Every time you put it on, you can start. You can see what's going on here. You you can see all that all those cuts there. Um, that's going to cut through the edge. So what I don't like here is that when you're actually you cannot take the axe and put it into the sheath by sliding it in like this, because that runs into that right there. You have to hook it in like that and then do that. And every time you do that, this sharp edge cuts through the leather there. I mean that, that so that's in my opinion that's a pretty bad design flaw there you can see that that it's got quite a few cuts and I'm I didn't go you know try to cut this on purpose I just have been putting it on and using it as, as usual but these axes are so sharp that it, it's really easy for them to cut through this leather it does have a welt which is nice it also has these rivets which go all the way through so these rivets here you know if you happen to hit this axe and strike it without taking the sheath off which which has happened to uh, one of our axes you will get some nicks in this blade and that's unfortunate so I know some guys out there and me, me myself as well prefer it to be stitched through so we've designed a new sheath for this thing and it'll be available on Amazon I'll show it to you here in a second but that's uh that's the sheath it is made out of leather this one here and uh, it's not not a bad quality sheath it has a nice little clip here and snap and it's pretty nicely made but um, you know I think these guys they get they make really nice axes but they've kind of I don't think they've taken their sheaths up to the quite the standard that they take the axe up to I mean it could be it could be better done um, but you know what am I what am I supposed to say here are the she here's a sheath that I'm talking about and uh, this is designed by us and then it's made by my dad actually who's a very good 
leather worker. Um, and this thing here is designed specifically for this axe. So it's formed specifically to this axe. It's leather made, 100% leather, uh, except for the metal and the string. And uh, designed and fitted specifically for this axe. So when you, when you see this, you'll see that it just slips in there just like that. And that's, that's on there. Perfect fit. Um, it doesn't cut into anything and it just holds there. It's very nicely. It's, it's like a glove, basically. And then it has a nice little snap here. Goes all the way around and snaps on. A little bit of a different look. So here we have the sewn through uh, bit here. And we don't have the, the uh, rivets here. So with that, you know, if you do happen to strike it with this thing on, you probably will still get that rivet to go in um, but most likely it's just gonna actually there's, the, the rivet isn't this thick so there's actually just a little small center portion so if you happen to strike it it'll it'll just go through there like that and you shouldn't ruin the blade but i mean you, hopefully you don't strike it of course it does have a nice welt and it's really nicely finished off there's the welt and on the inside you can see the welt there so this is all handmade um, there will be a link in the description to go to amazon to buy one of these things and also um, there's going to be a video that'll pop up here of how these things are handmade and you can see the whole process of how these sheets are made um, by my dad so it's just i think it's a really cool thing um, that he's been up to recently so anyway that's that let's go out and uh do a little chopping with this thing and see how, how it performs um now i'll say right away that in the hand here this palm swell that's a bonus you know the fact that it's swollen out this way and this way it, it feels really nice in the hand and um Especially, you know, for I think for the ladies too, if, if you're looking to get a little, little hatchet to take, I mean, this is really nice. It has a smaller handle and it'll fit really nicely into smaller hands. Um, it feel, fits pretty well in my hand as well. And this shape down here, it's like a little wedge or a little cone. And when you, when you make your fist, that's just a really natural, nice shape to go into your palm. So that's really cool. Um, oops, I just killed a mosquito there. There's a lot of mosquitoes here, sorry. Well, let's go chop. Let's go see how this thing performs, guys. All right, guys, let's do a little chopping test here. We got some hardwood, a little roll, and I've, I've already been trying to chop a little bit, and this, is, this thing is tough. It's really hard, um, so we'll see how it does. And uh, sorry for the shaky video, by the way. There's just a lot of mosquitoes out here. Forgot to put on bug spray and just getting eaten alive with these guys. So here we go. Here's the test of the chopping. And if I don't get through this right away, don't, don't be upset, but... Um, or this is more of a splitting test, I guess, than a chopping test. Let's see how it performs. Very short handle. Nice bite. It's getting there. A couple more. I will say guys, it's not the easiest thing to split with this axe because it's just so short and it's not very heavy. So it's not the best splitter. Um, and partly I will say this wood is really tough. So that's part of the reason. You can see how many times I've struck it already. Let's try this. That seemed to help. Just manhandle the wood now. <laughs> you guys, it's not totally dry, so it's a little bit harder to split. Let's see if we can get this bit with one shot. Maybe, maybe not. Nope. There we go. I don't have the best splitting. Yeah, this, this wood is wet still. Very, very moist. So that's making it harder to split, of course. But there you have it. Um, that's the splitting test. I'm guessing it'll split much better with dry wood. Uh, let's go chop and see how it chops that little tree down and see how that performs. I'm gonna chop just this little guy here, super tiny, and then we'll limb it real quick. You know, this ax isn't, you know, not designed to be a processor of huge, huge wood. It's very, you know, just bushcrafty or camping just very small things it could be in your pack and it'll be used for very small things or kindling in your house such other just small tasks um, so it's not going to be good for big trees but uh 
see how it performs on this one. It's going to get some of these little branches off of here. And I'm just cleaning out this forest here. We've been working on this for some time now. We'll see how this performs. It's pretty straightforward. Not the hardest of wood. This is just a piece of pine. Then this thing. It's very smooth cutting. Guys, there's no problem with the sharpness of this axe. I will say this is a nice, this is a nice quality uh, little axe, and it'll it serves a certain purpose, um, which is to be out there with you for your small camping tasks. Um, it's not going to be the a workhorse but there you have it there's the there's a chopping test um, and this thing will stay sharp for a while if you guys want to see how to keep it properly sharpened there's going to be a video that will pop up right over here click on that you'll see how I sharpen these axes just to make sure and keep them sharp um, there'll be a video for that so and uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, there will be a video or a little clip that will pop up after this that will give you some other axes that you can click on to watch other reviews um, you can check that out. Thank you very much for watching and uh, leave your comments below questions and uh, Give it a thumbs up because that helps with the channel a lot. So I Hope to see you soon and uh, praise God for everything he's doing for us out here and for this beautiful nature He's provided and enjoy the outdoors and I hope to maybe see you someday out there Enjoy